Well, it's Super Bowl Sunday, and that's all special and great, but it's just time for a standard weekly OTRS Central Triple Threat video. Hooray! This week, I want to talk about Braun Strowman, Dean Ambrose, and yet another person that should know better about how professional wrestling works, but unfortunately doesn't, and how it represents just out of, out of touch the professional wrestling business is with reality and how scary that really frankly is. Now, as a lot of us are looking ahead to the WrestleMania 32 card, I know we're sitting there and we're wondering what the hell are we going to get? And frankly, it doesn't look very good. Now, I know I'm most certainly of, them of, of that opinion because I'm looking and I'm like, where are the featured matches? Where are the matches that feel like they belong on a WrestleMania card? Where is the actual interest for me in the WrestleMania 32 card? And I'm sitting there wondering, above all else, I'm wondering who the hell The Undertaker is going to face at WrestleMania 32. And I just can't understand for the life of me, for the life of me, how the WWE, regardless of injuries, regardless of whatever excuses you want to fucking make, can get to a position in a point in time where they don't have a clear-cut opponent for The Undertaker at WrestleMania 32. You're heading into your biggest show of the year. On top of that, you know damn good and well, because you're at AT&T Stadium, you're trying to draw over 100,000 people. And you, you have nothing clearly, logically lined up for the dead man. You know he's going to be there. You know he wants to be there. You know you need him there. Why in the hell would you not do a better job of setting up something for him? Now, you can talk about the fact that John Cena got injured and that was the plan. And that very well could have been. And that would have been an incredibly compelling, main event worthy WrestleMania match. There is no question about that in my mind. One of those what would happen matches that we don't get that often in WWE or in the business as a whole today. But it doesn't matter if John Cena's out. This speaks to the ridiculousness and the stupidity of the WWE and their inability to build up multiple people at the same time. Frankly, they can't even really build up anybody effectively, let alone multiple people. So now you're left wondering, you know, you're like, you're sitting there, there's Kevin Owens, and you're like, okay, maybe if you do something, you build a little momentum behind him, maybe he can have a go at Undertaker and they can get something done. But now they're having him lose to fucking Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. I mean, seriously. And now you're sitting there and you're like, you're wondering, who's he going to face at WrestleMania? And one name that's been thrown out is Braun fucking Strowman. Giant Gonzalez from Beyond the Grave thinks that that match will be a colossal piece of shit. My roided up younger version of Uncle Udo is potentially in a position where he could get a featured WrestleMania match. A featured WrestleMania match against the goddamn Undertaker. How many singles matches has a Braun Strowman even had? Let alone at a WrestleMania. You're taking a guy that's green as goose shit. You're taking a guy with no real single match experience at a pay-per-view. And you're potentially looking at throwing him into the mix against arguably one of the greatest icons in the history of the business, one of the greatest superstars in the history of the WWE, and in my mind, for my money, the real Mr. WrestleMania, the fucking Undertaker. How dare you waste the Undertaker at WrestleMania on somebody like Braun fucking Strowman? I would expect this is the late 80s or the early 90s. Oh, he's a big, huge dude. We gotta love those muscles. His muscles have muscles that have muscles. And a lot of you probably think that I like that shit. But the fact is, I fucking don't. If I wanted to watch a younger version of my roided up Uncle Ludo, then I'd go travel back in time 20 years, give some cream in the clear to my Uncle Ludo, and tell him, go buy some damn ring gear and step in the fucking ring and become a professional wrestler. And we're about to make him, potentially, potentially, at least the way it looks at this moment, one of the featured attractions of WrestleMania 32. Now look, you can still try and save the situation. Maybe you could do some kind of like old school, new school thing where you could have Taker, Kane, and Big Show team up against the other three members of the Wyatt family, Rowan, Harper, and Strowman. I know that's not great, and I know that doesn't really feel like a huge WrestleMania match. But for Christ's sakes, I'd much rather see that than see a one-on-one -on -one match between The Undertaker and Braun Strowman. Taker doesn't have a lot of WrestleMania matches left. So I want to see him have good opponents that can give good matches to him and for him at WrestleMania because, frankly, he freaking deserves it. For all of the people that you could potentially throw at him, this is the direction that you go. This is the guy that you could choose for that spot. 
What in the hell does Braun Strowman do other than be big and flex and look stupid that merits him getting a spot at WrestleMania, wrestling of all fucking people, The Undertaker? I mean, you want to talk about a match that, if it wasn't for the sheer fact that the respect level the fans have for The Undertaker, would be a leading candidate for one of the worst matches of the year and be booed out of the fucking building at AT&T Stadium April 3rd, 2016 to WrestleMania 32. This is it! Braun fucking Strowman, what the hell does this company see in this guy that necessitates that you would potentially even consider or think about putting him in this damn spot with one of the greats of all time? Shame on the WWE for not doing a better job of building up more people. Injuries be damned or not. Those are pathetic fucking excuses, and I don't accept them, and you fucking shouldn't either. Shame on them. And furthermore, shame on them for even creating a situation where somebody like The Undertaker would have to be bogged down by wrestling a Braun Strowman at fucking WrestleMania. How ridiculous! I know what some of y'all are going to think, and some of y'all aren't going to like what I'm about to say here, but I'm going to say it anyways because I don't give a shit. It is what I think, and that's just the way it is. I see a lot of people are starting to pine for Dean Ambrose to get that spot, and by that spot I mean to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with God at WrestleMania 32. And I understand he's got a lot of history with y'all. Y'all go back to his John Moxley days and CZW and all of this, and you've seen him grow and develop over the years. You've seen him in WWE, first as a part of The Shield, and then that great rivalry he had with Seth Rollins. You see that bromance between him and Roman Reigns, and you sit there and you look at Roman Reigns, and you're like, why is this guy getting all these opportunities? Why is this guy getting this chance? Why is this guy getting this moment again? And Dean Ambrose is kind of left out in the cold. And I kind of understand it, and I kind of get it, because I'm not here to advocate for Roman Reigns being incredibly ready for that spot. I'm not convinced that I would be building my company specifically around Roman Reigns as that top guy for the next decade. But similarly, I don't know that anybody else on that roster that's currently there would be somebody I'd build a company around for the next five to ten years either. And that includes Dean Ambrose. I mean, here, here's my kind of my thing. I'm kind of tired of the indie darlings always getting pushed. I'm kind of tired of having to hear about on the internet these internet indie darlings. And yes, they're very similar. They have the same type of background. They wrestle very similar type of matches. You know, and that's just the fucking truth. You can deny it all you want, but you know it's goddamn true. I'm kind of tired of the same type of dude getting pushed with the same type of background getting pushed. And when I look at Dean Ambrose, to me, you know, for a community like us, who so often complain about the storytelling of WWE and how lacking it is because it is. Here's a clear and present case of the legitimacy of the storytelling between Triple H and Roman Reigns and how those dynamics can really work heading into WrestleMania 32. Some of you will say, well, he last eliminated Dean Ambrose from the Royal Rumble. There's story there. There's not the same story there. They didn't plunk Vince McMahon and Stephanie McMahon and Hunter at Roman Reigns just to go with Dean Ambrose. That would be a waste of time, a waste of fucking resources, and be completely and totally, honestly, fucking stupid. Now, I think it's kind of ludicrous and ridiculous as we look at it in the present sense that you, you can see where Brock Lesnar's going to WrestleMania. You can clearly see where Roman Reigns is going to WrestleMania, but it doesn't seem like there's a clear-cut instance of this is Dean Ambrose's WrestleMania match, and that concerns me a little bit, too, because he's a guy that you've got the IC title around. He's a guy that you've given television time to over the years, you know, he deserves some type of a featured spot at WrestleMania, but he doesn't deserve that spot. And he doesn't need that spot. And I'm tired of the same type of guys always being advocated for and pushed for by the hardcore wrestling fan base. You know, why not go with Roman Reigns here? You've already set it up. You know, at least the WWE is sticking with it. For once, it seems like they've got a plan and they've got a vision. And, you know, it's like one of these things is, you know, it speaks to the disconnect between the WWE and their reality and the hardcore fans and their reality. And both sides think they're right. And frankly, both sides are completely fucking wrong. Or at least somewhat wrong. What does Dean Ambrose do that is so incredibly special? I'd argue that a lot of his matches, especially if you don't incorporate hardcore stipulations in them, kind of suck. I mean, you know, for those of you that love work rate, right? like that's supposed to fucking matter at the end of the day from an entertainment value standpoint. I don't think he's, frankly, much of a worker at all. 
He's got a couple of tricks in his bag, and that's it. Frankly, Reigns, I think, has more tricks in his bag, even though he's a little over-reliant on that Superman punch, I'll guarantee you that. And he's a much better athlete. And, you know, when it comes to building up a WWE World Heavyweight Champion, can we please have somebody that doesn't look like a fucking dirt ball and doesn't look like he hasn't taken a shower in a goddamn week? I mean, CM Punk looked horrible. Sorry, newsflash, Daniel Bryan looked like he didn't want to shave or shower either. And then Seth Rollins had that kind of scuzzy quality to him. And Dean Ambrose with his ridiculous-looking comb forward? Yeah, that matters. You look at Roman Reigns, and you can at least see an appeal there, a potential to draw some goddamn money. Doesn't mean that he's going to, and it doesn't mean, frankly, that he's ready for that spot. Again, I don't disagree with that. But to me, it's completely and totally ridiculous to entertain the thought of Dean Ambrose getting that spot at WrestleMania. The dynamics between him and Triple H just won't be as good. The dynamics of him and Triple H, and then what do you do with Roman Reigns after you've invested so much in him? If you're going to go with him, you might as well go all the way with him. And for the fans that always want to sit there, and if they give us what we want, then we're really happy about it. Remember when they made CM Punk the champ, and they gave you the summer of punk, and how shitty that ended up being? That was in part because they weren't completely and totally committed and bought into it. And then you look at what they did with Daniel Bryan. You know, you build WrestleMania 30 around him. Oh, that worked out really good for the company long term, didn't it? <laughs> And again, ultimately, even if it wouldn't have been for the injury, they weren't completely and totally bought into Daniel Bryan. And as a result, the aftertaste wasn't very good. And then you look at Seth Rollins. And it even seemed like with him, they were a little more bought in. They were a little more in that corner. They were a little more ready to go with it. But it felt like they never really truly fully bought into him. They never really truly fully got behind him. That's why they would associate him with Triple H. That's why they would book him in a certain way. And it's like these types of guys, the WWE on the one hand doesn't have a problem featuring to a certain degree, but at the same point in time, they never go completely all the way with them. And if they're not going to be bought in and they're not going to believe it and they're not going to go all the way with it, I assure you, a Dean Ambrose title reign would be every bit as crappy, if not more so, than a prolonged Roman Reigns title reign in 2016. And furthermore, when you're looking at it from a character standpoint, what the hell does that mean for a Roman Reigns character long term that you know at some point in time they're going to go to anyways? They've already given him two really short title reigns. At some point in time, you've got to validate him. You've got to give him that big WrestleMania moment, and you've got to let him run with the ball in 2016. Look, someday I won't have a problem with Dean Ambrose getting that spot potentially. And I won't have a problem with him getting that shot. And I'd like to see down the road what he could do as the world champion. But frankly, I don't think he's any more ready for that top spot than Roman Reigns is, if we're being completely honest. And I don't think the WWE, more importantly, is ready for it either. I think it would be a complete unmitigated disaster in two months from now. You'd be bitching about how they watered him down and how late his fucking title reign is. Now, how about they book... Dean Ambrose better, and how about they give us reasons, frankly, to give a shit about his character on TV on a week-in, week-out basis before we start talking about that this guy should blow through Lesnar and frickin' Reigns and go on to main event WrestleMania 32. At least they give you reasons to attempt to want to care about Roman Reigns, even if you don't, even if those reasons aren't very good. At least they give you a reason every week to try to care. They give an effort. They're not giving that effort with Dean Ambrose, and you expect all of a sudden now if he went to Fastlane, they're going to hurry up and hotshot it and give you all types of reasons to give a fuck? Whatever. Dean Ambrose doesn't deserve to be anywhere near that WWE World Heavyweight Championship picture at WrestleMania 32. I'm sorry, that's the truth. You know, it's one thing if fans say stupid things. We're all going to from time to time. We're fans. You know, we've got a different perspective, and sometimes we're going to view it from a very selfish standpoint, and we're going to say stupid things about professional wrestling. We're going to say some just off-the-wall dumb shit. I know I'm guilty of it. And I've read the comments in the videos over the years. Believe me, a lot of you idiots are too. Okay, we're in this together on that. Boy, that. Oh, that's okay to a degree because it's expected. It's a known quantity. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're fans. So we're, we have our own opinions. We have our own beliefs, whatever the case might be. And we're not the ones calling the shots. We're not the ones running the show. So there aren't quite the same level of consequences and repercussions to our actions or our beliefs, as opposed to people inside of the wrestling business. What really bothers me, though, is that when I hear people in the wrestling business that have, frankly, been at the top of the wrestling business say incredibly dumb and stupid shit. Just incredibly dumb and incredibly stupid. And, and, and it, it, it's frightening to me because it's a representation of just what is wrong with professional wrestling today. 
The people that aren't supposed to be the marks, in a lot of cases, are the biggest marks of all. The people that should know better just absolutely don't have a fucking clue, which makes you wonder why the wrestling business is in the shape that it's in. We know why the wrestling business is in the shape that it's in, because the people calling the shots and running the show, the people at the top, have no fucking clue. They don't know what the hell they're doing. They think they know, but the problem is that they don't know. You know, we've heard over the years Vince Russo say a lot of dumb and stupid shit, and he has. Uh, but we've also heard Jim Cornette say some incredibly dumb and stupid shit, especially recently some of the things he said about Lucha Underground, in my opinion. And now we get this recent interview that Road Dog did. You know, one of God's apostles backstage, somebody who had been at the top of WWE in the past, somebody who has a good mind for the business in theory, somebody that should know better, sitting there and saying that wins and losses don't count. I'm going to be doing a separate video about this in a day or two to come. So believe me, I'll be expanding upon this a lot more and just how ridiculous this is. But this is frightening to me. Somebody who's a backstage agent, somebody who's one of God's chosen right-hand men, one of his apostles, is saying something that, like, wins and losses don't count. I get it. It's scripted entertainment. It's fake. It's not real. It's predetermined. But if wins and losses didn't count, then why do you have the fucking matches? Why do you talk about who's going to win and who's going to lose? And why do the wrestlers talk about who's going to win and who's going to lose? It's just, of all the mind-numbingly, mind-blowing, stupid shit I've heard said about wrestling over the past five, six years, it's amazing, frankly, how little of it has actually been said by fans and how much of it, the lion's share, large percentage, has been said by wrestlers, bookers, creative minds, executives involved with the professional wrestling business. The stupidity of this, these people is absolutely, absolutely, unequivocally astounding. I mean, just unfathomable how dumb some of the things that these people say are. Wins and losses don't count. If wins and losses don't count, above all else, then why even have matches? Why is there even a point to have a rivalry? Why is there even a point to have a feud? What the hell are you wrestling for? Why the hell do you even put out a show? Can everybody else see just how dumb and ridiculous that is? And like I said, I'll be explaining upon this in the next day or two because i got a lot more to say about it and just how much it concerns me. Is somebody, God's Apostle, one of his right-hand men, thinks that wins and losses don't count. Then if wins and losses don't count, why does John Cena always have to win 99% of the time? If wins and losses don't count, then what does it fucking matter if he wins or he loses? Because it doesn't count! You see how fucking stupid that is? Holy Christ. And this is somebody that we're supposed to respect. This is somebody that has an impact over young wrestlers' careers. This is somebody that's very involved with the creative process of the company. And he thinks wins and losses don't count. No wonder the WWE product is all types and shades of fucked up right now. So that's it for this week's Triple Threat video. Let me know your thoughts on the potential of Braun Strowman wrestling The Undertaker at WrestleMania 32. <clears throat> your thoughts on Dean Ambrose, whether or not you think he deserves that main event spot at WrestleMania 32 and why or why not. And then are you with me about how ridiculous it is that Road Dog says that wins and losses don't count in professional wrestling? Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'll see you later.